uh, in the last class we were discussing the active load and let me quickly go over that discussion. Uh, we were doing this uh, in respect to a PMOS common source amplifier, but the discussion remains largely unchanged with an NMOS amplifier. So, the assumption is that uh, this is the gate voltage is biased at a potential VG naught. The transistor is operating in saturation and carries a drain current ID. Uh, I, I, I not. Now, we said that the incremental gain uh, is of course, given by the negative of uh, G m times R and uh, so, if you want to keep the same bias current and go on increasing the incremental gain, what will we do? What will we do? Yeah, okay. So, uh, first of all, for a fixed VDD and a fixed current, if you want to increase the gain, what will we do? We have to go on increasing R until the transistor just is at the edge of the uh, triode region. Very good. So, uh, but beyond that, uh, it is a point of diminishing return because if you increase the resistance beyond that, the transistor goes into triode where the transconductance drops and the output resistance goes from being infinite to being some a finite value. And uh, uh, so, graphically also we saw that when we do those lines, uh, we found that the incremental gain is going to fall beyond that maximum value of that resistor. To, to fix the problem therefore, what did we have to do? We had to keep the transistor always at the edge of saturation. So, we had to increase VDD and VG naught by the same amount so that the transistor continues to stay at the edge of saturation. And we go on increasing R until the transistor, uh, the drain potential, uh, you know, uh, is exactly such that the transistor is at the edge of at the edge of saturation, right? And uh, therefore, uh, we saw that there is a fundamental limit to the maximum gain you can get with a common source amplifier, and that limit depends on the supply voltage, right? So if you want to bias the transistor at a given current and get a lot of incremental gain that is only possible by increasing the supply voltage. And we also saw that if you wanted to increase this maximum gain by a factor of 10, the supply voltage has to be increased approximately by a factor of 10, all right. And uh, uh, so, basically the key points uh, behind the discussion are that uh, the incremental gain is limited by the supply and B uh, to increase gain by say, I do not know 100 x, what do we need to do? VDD has to go up by 100 x, okay. And as you can see, that is a terribly inefficient way of, of uh, 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 terribly inefficient because you are going to be burning uh, 100 times the power to get 100 times the gain, all right. And uh, so, the question is can we do, can we do better than this? And uh, uh, last time we saw that if this load element was linear, there is no way you can do better. The only way to do better is to replace that load with a nonlinear load and uh, that happened to be, so this is VDD, this is VG naught again and uh, this had to be replaced by uh, an NMOS load and the NMOS transistor must be biased so that, how should we bias the NMOS transistor? Yeah, the current in the NMOS transistor must be exactly the same as the, the current in the PMOS transistor. So, this is I naught and under those circumstances, right, you will get if both the, the transistors are operating in the saturation region, the current here is going to be exactly the same as the current here, all right. And what is the incremental gain? So, let us say we add an incremental signal here, what would be the uh, uh, incremental output? 
Where is R naught now? Oh, well, okay. So, if the transistors are ideal in the sense that if lambda is 0 for both transistors, what, what comment can we make about the, uh, the gain, incremental gain? Infinite, why? So, uh, if, if the output resistance is of the transistors is infinite, then the incremental gain you can get is actually infinite, right. And why does that make sense? Well, uh, there are multiple ways of seeing it. One is to look at the graphical stuff that we saw the last time around. So, let me do that again. So, as far as the PMOS transistor is concerned, if I plot, uh, I think we would call this uh, Vx. What do you call Vbx? If we plot Vx versus uh, 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 I for the PMOS transistor, it basically does that and this value is going to be Vg0 plus Vtp, all right. And for the NMOS transistor, if the NMOS transistor is carrying a current exactly equal to I, uh, then the uh, the operating point basically will be something like that, right. So basically, you can see that uh, the easy way of looking at it is that if the uh, if the if the uh, uh, if Vi incrementally changes by a small amount, right. So this is the characteristic of the NMOS transistor, and this corresponds to the PMOS device. Now, if the incremental voltage Vi increases by an infinite uh, similarly small amount, what comment can you make about the, uh, the uh, PMOS characteristic? It will drop by an infinitely small amount. I am just uh, for, the, for the sake of uh, uh, visual clarity, I am doing something like this. So, this is what will happen if the input was a small Vi. So, what happens to the operating point? This is, this is what will happen to the operating point, right. And uh, uh, under these, so if, uh, if uh, for Vi, small Vi positive, what comment can we make? What is the region of operation of the transistors? Which transistor is operating in, uh, in saturation? Which is in triode? PMOS is in saturation, NMOS is in triode, all right. Okay, and uh, uh, for uh, 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 I mean this is the operating point. Let's call that A. For but small for small V i, but V i less than zero. What comment can you make about the operating point? What will happen to the PMOS characteristic? PMOS will move slightly up. So PMOS goes to the triode region. So, this is uh, uh, actually this is the operating point that is B. So, you can see that the incremental gain has uh, I mean. So, uh, uh, the, the PMOS is in uh, triode, right. So, we can see that the output has changed from a voltage which is originally uh, uh, when uh, the, the uh, for small positive incremental Vi, where that Vi tends to 0, you will see that the output has gone, the output was low, correct, almost close to the Vd sat of the NMOS transistor, correct. Now, for a uh, infinitesimally small Vi which is negative, the output is goes to Vdd minus Vdd minus Vd sat of the PMOS transistor, right. So, basically, uh, so this is uh, Vdd minus Vds, a uh, delta V of the PMOS transistor, whereas this is delta V of the NMOS transistor. So, you can see that for an infinitesimally small change in Vi, the output changes by a by a finite amount right, which is uh, Vdd minus 
the overdrive of the uh, NMOS uh, minus the overdrive of the PMOS device. So, therefore, the, you can see that the incremental gain therefore is infinite. All right. That is also evident by drawing the small signal equivalent, right. If you draw the small signal equivalent, what do we see? The PMOS transistor is incremental equivalent, this is Vi, this is GMP times Vi, and that goes into it is an open circuit, that is all, right. That is VO, right. So, what is the incremental gain? Is it by the way, is it GMR or minus GMR? Minus GMR. So, basically, the incremental gain is negative infinity, all right. So, therefore, now coming back to what where we stopped the previous time. So, if I plot Vg, which is the voltage at the gate of the PMOS transistor, for a magic value of Vg, the incremental gain will be infinity. What is that magic value? Vg naught, what is so confusing? Is this clear? Why is it Vg naught? At uh, operating point Vg naught, the incremental gain is infinite. Okay. So how? Uh, so the uh, 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 will it? Uh, uh, so will the will it the curve look like this or will the curve look like that? Second, because the uh, the this thing is negative infinity, right? So the incremental gain is negative infinity. What is this value? This is Vx, yeah. Very good. This is Vdd minus delta Vp. This is the delta Vn. Okay. So beyond uh, for uh, this is Vg naught. For Vg uh, less than Vg naught, how will the characteristic look like? All right. So, but uh, uh, unfortunately, the lower current, the, the 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 current pulled by the lower transistor is is I naught. So, the PMOS transistor attempts to push more current whereas, the NMOS transistor can only sink I naught. So, what comment can you make about the potential of node x? It will keep increasing until until the transistor goes into the linear region, correct. So, for Vg now, for Vg equal to 0, what comment can you make about the region of operation of the transistor? Linear. So, what comment can you make about uh, the output voltage Vx? That Vx will be when Vg is 0. What region is the transistor operating in? Linear region, okay. 1 over mu p c ox w by l times, yeah, 1 by, I have written 1 by. PDD minus VG naught minus VTP. All right. Okay. Because in the triode, in the deep in triode, what comment can you make about which which term can you neglect? Half the VDS square. Okay, so all right. So now, what is the uh, uh, the voltage at that point? Therefore, VDD minus I naught times R, where R is one over mu p c ox 
W by L times V D D minus V G naught minus V T. All right. So how will the curve go from there now? What will be the shape of the curve? It will be a straight line. Vg, Vg naught by the way is 0, right? When Vg naught is 0, this will be Vdd minus Vtp. All right. So, when you increase uh, Vg naught from 0, what, uh, uh, what will happen? How will this curve look like? Please work it out. It will look like something like this. Okay. And uh, when uh, Vg naught becomes uh, you know very very large what happens? When Vg naught is Vdd what happens? The transistor is cut off. Uh, so, when will the transistor become alive? Yeah. So, basically from Vdd to uh, Vdd minus Vtp the output will be 0 okay, and it will do something like All right. So, if you think of this as a logic circuit, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of behavior is this? This is an inverter, right? But uh, when the inverter is in the uh, when the input is uh, is high, the output is zero, right? Now, what is the power consumption uh, in that situation when the input is high? power is 0, right. Uh, but uh, I mean if you assume that even this corresponds to uh, a low output, you can see that for a part of that characteristic, the power consumption is not is not 0, but it is smaller than I naught times VDD, correct. Here in this region, what comment can you make about the power consumption? When the output is in the logical 1 state, what comment can you make about the power dissipation? Okay. So, that is basically the power dissipated is Vdd times I naught. Okay. So, you can see that even though this shows an inverting characteristic, uh, uh, in both logic states uh, there is static power dissipation, all right. Okay. And uh, this is the region of interest as far as analog operation is concerned, we uh, want that that high gain uh, without having to use a high supply voltage. Okay. And what is the peak to peak output swing that is possible without distortion? Vdd minus delta Vtp minus delta Vn. Is that clear? Okay. So, with that uh, uh, the uh, the active load uh, discussion uh, is complete. In practice of course, what will we have uh, the output resistance of the transistors will not be infinite. So, what comment can you make about any modifications in this curve uh, that uh, uh, we will we should expect to see when the output resistance is not infinite? Well, the slope is being infinite we will basically have some finite slope things. And the incremental gain will be minus Gm, which Gm? You know the PMOS transistor times RON parallel RO. Okay. 